Hello students. So in the last class we discussed uh, uh, theory on uh, bearings and how to calculate include angles from bearings, right? We solved the different types of problem, right? For one problem we solved how to find the include angle based on bearings, okay? In a closed traverse, okay? Now and also we have some introduction regarding prismatic compass in the previous class. Okay. So as the starting itself we told that right. So along with the chain survey we are going to use the compass. That is the compass is the instrument right. The compass is the instrument uh, it is to measure the directions. Okay. To measure the directions we have instrument called compass okay we have instrument called compass okay so along with the chain survey right so in what direction you are moving in a chain survey to know that or to establish a particular object right so we need directions necessary that already we discussed in the last class what is the importance of direction okay so now to know the direction we are going to use a instrument called compass Okay, so what is the basic principle for the compass means it will works based on the freely suspended magnetic needle, right? Freely suspended magnetic needle, freely suspended magnetic needle, right? So if you are suspending a magnetic needle like this, okay? It will orient it towards the how it will orient to orient it north south direction. Okay, so based on this, you can uh, you can make uh, suspended that magnetic right at any uh, at any place on the earth. It will source always north and south. Okay, except at uh, where poles. Except at poles. Remaining times we will get the direction of north and south. Okay. Now among this north and south we are going to take reference as the north. Okay. So from north we are going to tell the direction right with the help of by measuring the 360 degrees angle. 3, 0 to 360 angle. Round the thing we have to tell which direction from north. Right. From north if you are moving in a clockwise direction you will achieve an angle of 0 to 360. Now, with respect to north, at a particular point, we can locate any other object with some angle. So, by measuring from angle with respect to the north. That's why already uh, we know that if you, if you are taking any plan, okay, any plan, anything you can observe there, there will be marked, right, there will be marked with the north direction on the right, right, right top side of the plan they will mark north direction okay so that is the importance of north direction in the survey okay so now same thing here the compass will work based on the principle of freely suspended magnet right so the compass always that compass needle will always orient it towards the north always it will orient it towards the north now based on that we are going to see get the angle of a particular object okay now so the instrument which is working on this principle is called compass right by using compass we are going to measure the directions okay that we know right now mainly we are having two types of compasses one is prismatic compass another one is the surveyor compass surveyor compass and another one is the prismatic compass okay already uh, these directions are bearings right the angles measured with respect to the meridian okay magnetic meridian or any meridian is called bearing okay angles measured with respect to a particular uh, meridian is called bearing okay now bearings are uh, measured roughly what is called represented in uh, two forms. What is that? One is whole circle bearing, another one is the 
reduced bearing. Right? Now, here we are having the two compasses. One is prismatic compass, another one is the surveyor's compass. Right? So, prismatic compass will work on the based on the principle of what is called it will represent bearing in terms of whole circle bearing. Whole circle bearing. That means angles will be represented only with respect to north from 0 to 360. That already we saw and we solved the problems also. How to uh, convert whole circle to reduced bearing, reduced bearing to whole circle. But if you are if you're going for a survey compass, the representation of bearings will be in the reduced bearing or quadrantal bearing system. Reduced bearing or quadrantal bearing system, the bearings will be measured here. Okay, in the case of prismatic compass, it will be in terms of whole circle bearing system. Right? So now, here, we have so many differences between prismatic and uh, survey compass. Right? So, in prismatic compass, the representation of uh, uh, bearings in whole circle bearing, in survey compass, it is in Rigid bearing or quadrantal bearing system. So that means we are going to give uh, bearings with respect to north and south in case of reduced bearings or quadrantal bearing system. Okay. So and also the second thing is in case of prismatic compass, the readings, the angles or the bearings which are on the needle will be in uh, opposite direction. Okay. We have to if you are seeing directly the readings now, it will be in the opposite. But in case of surveyor compass, the readings will be directly you can read. Okay, this is the main difference between these two compasses. But in our J and K syllabus, they gave uh, syllabus in our syllabus only prismatic, but uh, uh, based on the your interest, that is based on student interest, you can learn, a, okay, even prismatic compass also, what is called, surveyor compass also. Okay, prismatic compass they gave in the syllabus, but along with this, you have to know what is this difference features of surveying compass also. Okay. So in today's class, we are going to see what is prismatic compass, how it, how it will, uh, how it is different components are, uh, okay, of prismatic compass, right. So we are going to make readings from it, right. So that up to that, we will discuss in this class. Okay. So now, you can see here in this figure, in this figure, it is a uh, direct image of prismatic compass. Okay? Why it is no, no, called as the prismatic compass? Means, already told that the readings are in a reverse direction. The readings are on the magnetic needle in reverse, right? It is reverse direction. Okay? So, due to reverse direction of that particular thing, we have to see the reading with the help of a prism. We have to use compulsorily the prism to read out the bearings or angles on the magnetic needle. Right? Since we are using prism to what is called see the or noting down the bearing angle. Okay? So, the bearing that's why it is called prismatic compass. That's why it is called prismatic compass. Okay. How in this figure we can see very clearly we have a metal round box. Right. Circular metallic box. This is metallic box. Okay. So in the center of this box we have a, a needle. Okay. A needle pivoted. Okay. It, one thing is there pivoting point. Over that we can see here this is pivoted freely. This is pivoted freely and the needle will be pivoted and it will be a circular one completely it will be in a circle but in case of surveying compass the needle will be straight thing like this it will be there. okay it will be centered but here how it is look like you know circular one and it is pivoted here that is connected so around this we can see the readings, all angles from 0 to 360 will be there. Okay. So here, towards the south, we can see the zero angle. 0, 90, 180, 270. Towards the west, 
we have 90 degrees. Towards north, we will have a 180. Towards east, it will be 270. Again, 360 or 0, both are same. Okay. So, then coming to the next thing, right. Here, we have two hinged veins. These are called vein. These are called veins. Right. So, this is called I vein, this is called I vein, this is called object vein. Okay. So now, this compass is going to place in your hand like this. If you are, if you are able to hold this compass with a leveled surface, you can use your hand. Otherwise, we have to use a tripod. We have to use a tripod. This stand, normally we call it as a stand, but technically it is called tripod. What is it called? Tripod. Why? Because tri means three, right? Three legs will be having, that's why it is called tripod. This tripod will have a ball socket, okay? Ball socket. You can, uh, what is called? You can make for all, all, all direction, 360 degrees, you can make, right? It will be rotate, okay? So that freedom will be there to set up this instrument in a leveled surface, okay? So that type of joint is there, you can place it over it, okay? Now, if you want to observe, now we have to take the reading, right? So to take reading, we have to keep our eye at this point. We have to keep your eye at this point. That's why it is called eye vein. Okay, you are keeping your eye near to that now. So that's why it is called eye vein. And from here, we have to observe the object. We have to observe the object. Which object? Even maybe tree or building, right? Or electric pole through object vein. That's why, why it is called object vein? This vein is, look at what is called, turn towards the object. Here we are going to keep your eye and from here we are going to see the object through this vein. That's why it is located towards the object, right? So that's why it is called objective vein and you are using eye here. This is called, it is towards the, your eye and it is towards the object. That's why it is called objective vein and this way it is called I vein. Okay? Now, if you are observing the objective vein here, we have a small thread. Why it is required? While observing any object from I vein to objective, objective, right? So, we have to keep exactly the center. We have to make it perfect with the help of the Thread. thread has to go and match with the object. If the electrical pole is there, that electrical pole and this thread has to be in a same line. It has to be in the same line. So, then only you can measure the angle. Once you are keeping this thread exactly matching with the, that object, then from there itself, from there, from I vein itself, if you are reading, if you are seeing down, since there we are putting a like this prism called, okay. So from here, we can see this is our eye now, like this, it will be there, right? Once you are there now, already some angles will be there, thing it will come and reflect, and it, readings will be very clearly you can read. Very clearly you can read, even it is in opposite direction now. So we will get you will read readings directly with the help of your eye, only through prism you can measure. Uh, through prism only you can read. Okay? So, that's why it is called prismatic compass. That's why it is called prismatic compass. Okay? So, then already right, told so that needle is having from 0 to 360, it is represented in some whole circle bearing system. So, at uh, south direction 0, right? West direction 90, right? North direction 180, east direction 270 will be marked. Okay? So here, each minimum thing is 30 minutes. Okay? Each angle will be, okay, minimum angle, right? That is 30 minutes we can measure. Right? So now we will see, again, is a line diagram. A line diagram of prismatic compass. Okay? So here, we can see the, 
need right center point is pivoted okay this is continuous big circular thing and you can observe here you can observe here the readings are in a or marked as a oppositely these are marked in a oppositely okay now here we are having the i vein and as well as the prism prism is having here and we have the i vein this is the i vein opposite i vein we will have a objective vein with the arch hair okay one thread or hair is there na to uh, what is called to sight the object okay and this line is called from here with alpha we are i you are going to sight the object that's why this line is called line of sight this line is called line of sight okay all right don't look this is a metal box this is a metal box and here whatever cap is provided no that is called angle cap and over this okay so it is covered with the glass cover okay to avoid dust okay so to keep our instrument safely against dust okay we have the glass plate over this needle okay now already told this is a magnetic needle below the arm here below the arm we have a magnetic needle and it attached to a a round right thing okay and also here we are having the some rider okay to move all these things we have some rider okay so if you are seeing the front view it will be look like the magnetic arm will be look like and from top it will be look like this okay so here you can see okay now here we are having the two sunglasses two sunglasses if you are sighting towards in a day time okay even because of this prism are to in the instead of the sun your eyes may get affected that's why there are two sunglasses here based on your sun uh, light intensity we are going to use to protect your eyes without any getting any clear and without getting affected to your eyes okay so i think you understood well the construction of this what is called prismatic compass and finally here it is there this is aluminum graduated ring right we have the ring this is the aluminum ring okay even you can see here this is aluminum ring okay now we will come on point by point let me explain okay what is the construction of this prismatic compass okay so and also now you can see here same thing here we have in a mirror okay through the objective vein an objective vein arch hair right graduated ring glass cover or ice eye thing okay this is eye vein no here we have a prism here we have sunglasses eye vein eye slit eye hole hinge hinges are there to fold this objective and eye veins right eye vein will be folded down and this objective vein will be folded top of this glass right that's why you can observe here hinge that means you can fold like this right so that is the thing now we have a lift pin we have a lift pin sometimes your uh, aluminum ring may not be in a level position right so you can lift that uh, pin and fall uh, so it will okay free, uh, what is called uh, floated freely okay so for that sometimes we have to your ring may move in a circular manner it won't be stable to stop that we have a one stopping thing right so like that this is a metal box lifting lever hinge for this thing prism sunglass eye vein hinge strap focus stud adjustable clamp rider everything is there inside and also readings are noted from 0 to 360 in the graduated reversely okay now we will see the prismatic compass consists of a circular box we already know that it is a circular box of diameter 85 to 110 mm right 1010 mm diameter at center of metal box a needle and pivot is provided at center a needle and a pivot is provided okay so the pivot balances the magnetic needle right the pivot pivot means at the center we have a need okay one pivot pivot means it will be like this over this we have placed the 
metal thing. Okay? Uh, what is called? Needle as well as the circular thing. Okay? The PO to balance is the magnet needle which is attached to the graduated aluminum ring. Right? This is the aluminum ring. This is aluminum ring. Below that we have the needle. Over needle it is attached to a aluminum ring. Right? So next, the gradations are in degrees, degrees to minimum is 30 minutes. Half of the one angle is equal to 30 minutes. We know that one angle is equal to 60 minutes, right? Again, one minute is equal to 60 seconds, right? So like that, the minimum will be 30 minutes. Half of the one angle will be there and it is from 0 to 360. Minimum is 30 minutes, maximum will have the 0 to 360 in the clockwise direction in the clockwise direction that means from south 0 is there ok this will be marked again 360 ok so the 0 is marked at south end ok I already told that the 0 is marked at south end of magnetic needle because the readings are read at the opposite end of the object opposite end of the object you have to read now that's why it is in opposite ok now, at west it is marked as 90. We have to move in a clockwise direction from 0 now. So that's why west will get 90 degrees. North will get how much? 180, right? And east will get 270 degrees. Again, 360, 0 is equal 1. Okay? So now, north, north is at 180, east is at 270 degrees respectively. Then, the gradations are marked inverted because they are viewed through a prism at the eye vein. A prism is located at the eye vein. Through that we are going to read out the readings. Okay. So, which is cut 45 degrees one phase and 90 for the other two phases. Right. If you are taking this, this is the prism now. Right. This is 90. This is 45. Through this we are going to speed out the angle which is on the Aluminum ring, right? The readings are get reflected through prism, resulting in a erected image. From here, it will come and we will get the direct image. A sighting slit, a sliding slit near to this prism. Okay, we have the near eye vein. One slit, slit na. If you are taking a metal plate like this, if you are having a small gap inside, through that we can see the Objective when in objective when again we are having the one horse hair like thread now. So with the help of our eye through this slit, it will go on the side the objective when after in the objective when again we have to see the thread. That thread has to keep exactly to match with the object. To do that we have a sighting slit. This means some gap or some straight gap in the article hole is provided provided in the box to carry the prism this box can be moved up and down for focusing by means of studs okay next the prism box is hinged the prism box is hinged so that it can be folded to remove the compass box two sunglasses are provided to observe the box here i told that these are provided with the hinge why because to Close right to close this objective vein as well as the I vein. We have the hinges, okay. And two sunglasses are provided here. We are having the two sunglasses, okay. What is the reason for that? To observe the bright objects. If you are observing a bright object like sun or any light, no, you need this. Next, an objective vein is provided in the line of sighting silt. Okay, slit. It is a open frame with a central vertical horse shape. It is a open like this. We have a opening, right? Here, from one straight thread or horse hair is provided to sight the object. The object when is hinged to compass. Again, we can fold this onto the glass. Next, when it is not in use, it is folded on flat glass okay you can fold on the glass the base of the objective vein presents the presses the 
lifting the pin, bringing the magnetic needle to rest with the help of lifting lever. Here we have a lifting lever. Okay. If you are pressing like this, so okay, if in, it is in a rest position, it will come and float freely. Okay. Next, a brake pin. A brake pin means I already told that. If you are bringing it to the free dinner, it won't be in stable position. Always, okay, the ring will be moved freely, but it, it will take some time to bring to rest. That's why to do that, we are going to apply some brakes, okay. That is called brake pin is provided to stop the oscillations of the graduated ring, to facilitate the reading of the graduated ring, okay. So, to do this, we have a Break pin, then only the oscillation will be stopped and the graduated ring will be in a stable position so that we can read the reading. Okay, not only reading. A glass cover is fitted over the box to protect the needle from dust. Okay, normally complete box is provided with a box. Then the compass is fitted to a tripod stand. The compass is fitted to a tripod stand. Already told that if you are able to a Experienced person or experienced surveyor he can he can place the compass in hand in a leveled way and he can read out the angle. If that compass or that particular graduated uh, needle it is not in a leveled position, right? So it will give wrong answers. Okay. So to make that either we have to use our hand, but normally it is provided with a tripod stand. A tripod stand consists of ball and socket joint. Ball means it will be like this. Okay. Now three legs will be there. Now while keeping on this, the compass is provided. Keeping on this, we can move like this. We can turn. We can move up and down. Then we can bring the compass to a level surface. That's why it is provided with a ball and socket joint which helps in leveling the compass quickly which helps us the bringing the compass quickly next we are having the method of using prismatic compass method of using prismatic compass okay so uh, what is the method to use uh, compass means all i told that the compass may be held in the hand but better result uh, you can place the compass in your hand. If you are a experienced person, you can use your hand. Otherwise, you are, but for better results, they are slowly mounted on a tripod. Okay. Which carries vertical spindle ball and socket joint. Already we know that. Okay. Next. By means of this arrangement, the instrument can be leveled. Okay. To bring the aluminum ring in a level position, you can bring it and rotate it in a horizontal plane and clamp in any position, right? So next, working of prismatic compass, okay? Same thing, you are going to place in a hand or in a, so what is called, in, uh, mounted onto a tripod, you can read out. By means of these arrangements, the compass can be placed in a position easily. It's working involves in the following steps. What are the following steps now? Here we are having the two steps, okay? That is temporary or stationary arrangements, we are having the permanent adjustments. Okay. So in the temporary arrangements, we have centering. That means placing the instrument exactly over the station, leveling, focusing the prism, observing the bearing, then in the permanent adjustment, adjustment of levels, adjustment of veins, adjustment of needle, adjustment of the pivot point. Okay. So in the next class, we are going to see the what are these. Right, what is mean by centering? This is very important compared to permanent adjustment. What are the temporary adjustments? Are very important. What is mean by centering? What is mean by leveling? What is mean by focusing? What is mean by observing the bearing? Okay, so we we'll also know about all these four also permanent adjustment. Okay, these things are done at every point of your reading, but this has to be done randomly. Whenever it is required, you can go for this adjustment. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you.